Here's today's hilarious diddly bob. This is an antique Texas Instruments calculator. This is probably one of the first calculators came out on the market in America, I believe. Or it's certainly very of that date. It's got extremely nice clicky buttons. You know, it feels great to use. Um, I have a couple of these and none of them work. I found them in the garbage bin actually, where I work, actually. <laughs> um, I've modified this a little bit. Uh, I tried to, in I installed an external power adapter, but they still didn't work. So this is interesting. You can see this is an electronic slide rule. It's not even a, uh, it's not even, they don't call it, you know, like a, just a calculator. It's a slide rule calculator, which should basically say that they're competing with slide rules when they released it. It's, the display is LED based, so you, it's, um, it had a rechargeable battery. Um, as you can see, it, it uses LED displays, so the battery doesn't last very long. Um, they've got all these great, you know, like they show you how to use it. It's, um, really kind of classic. It's just really an amusing piece of equipment. Um, you can see it's actually interesting. Four two three oh four point two three I see six minus one point eight four that's funny they show the dot sign to show that that's how you enter a dot it has square roots it's fancy clear display blah -dee blah it's got pi one over square square root lets you put an e signs and it's got chain sign which is nice it's an SR eleven and you can see the display is actually in there. It uses the um, the LED based seven segments, the really early ones that have little um, dies. You know, they they have individual little LED dies in them rather than uh, in like the modern segments. You know, which are kind of um, they have a diffuser on them. These are undiffused. They've actually got little lenses on them. They're beautiful looking when they're running. Anyways, there's probably not that much in here. Let's just take the bottom off. Ooh, yum. Gotta love that antique technology. Have a look at that. So this is presumably some of the earliest, you know, commercially available calculators on the market. You can see it took three NICADs and they leaked all over the place. Nasty blue goop. Let me just cut these wires. Misusing some. So use only fast recharge, 408, 450 milliamp hour nickel cadmium batteries. Man, you know, this uses AA size batteries, and nowadays the same battery gets you 2,500 milliamp hours rather than 450. Do not attempt to operate calculator with charger plugged in unless batteries are in place. Oops. So here's this wonderful, absolutely wonderful circuit board. Classic technologies, it's all. So anyways, I, so anyways, I just looked it up and this calculator was in fact manufactured in 1972, I believe. So what we have here is um, space age technology. I love when advertisements boast their space age technology because you know when the space age was? The 70s. Anyways, so here's the main, uh, presumably the calculator I see, and these are, I would imagine, display drivers. I mean, it's one thing of interest is that this is the negative rail and this is the positive rail. And you can actually see they're switching the ground to the board, which is interesting. I mean, given that the whole thing is floating, it's kind of switching the ground or the power supply or the positive rail would work fine, and it's kind of six of one. But it is uh, unusual. Normally, you want to be switching the VCC rail. Actually, I think I'm going to stick some volts on this and see if it powers up. I mean, I know the voltage rating it requires. It wants 4.7 volts, 4.5 volts or something. Well. What's four NICADs? 1.2, 1.2, 2.4, 3 3.6, 3.6 volts. Let me just find some clip leads. I need longer dynamic plugs. Let's see if I can do Go. So let's just clip on there, and clip on here, and we are not drawing any current. 
So this is not a happy camper. That's kind of obnoxious. Oh well. Oh, whoops. <laughs> or I could just be being stupid. Ha! It's alive! So here you can kind of see the nice. So you can see the very beautiful display. The other thing that's interesting is you can see that when you press a button, it's actually using the same memory, presumably, that's used for the display to run the calculations in it. So you can actually see the display changes when buttons are pressed because it's using the RAM that also runs the display to do other stuff. But it's just, let's see if we can't get a better look at these LEDs. You can kind of see there. So you can see how there's actual individual discrete LED dies in there. That's the row of little tiny dies. And the way these work is they're actually, um, most of them have little tiny lenses on them. So if we look, you know, because the dies were so small, they, they basically used lenses to make them appear larger. It's just some bit of plastic. So here's the back side of the displays. You can see each display has um, eight pins. These are actually nice. I think if these are the kind I think they are, um, you can desolder them and use them in other projects. You know, because they're so beautiful, who'd want to waste them? Oh, yeah. So the display is held in by four screws. Part number CP... CP200098 Rev A. It's interesting, I wonder what this, this little toroidal conductor is. It looks like it's hand-wound. It's also, there's only two leads running to it, so I think it's, it's being used as a choke. I wonder if this is like some sort of core memory or something. To be of the proper vintage, that was when they used core memory. And it's also got lots of discretes. Oh, yeah. oh. There we go. So there you can see there's the interconnected to the display board. Here's yeah, the this calculator front panel is riveted, or the um, the button board is either riveted or I think actually it looks like these are kind of slide latches. So the board is installed and slides into place and then flopped down. So the issue is, is the controller, the display has to come out this way and that other board has to come out that way and they're soldered together. So this thing is not designed with repairability in mind. Alternatively, it's possible these are just um, plastic rivets, which they kind of look like they are, where they just there's a plastic post and then they just use a hot cylinder, cylinder to push down on it and it kind of mushrooms the plastic out. Let's see if this sucker will come loose. Ha! Freedom! Yeah, so it's just, um, it's hot riveted, or it's plastic riveted down. Alright. So the back end of the spudger. Ah. So if I can lift this up, it may slide out. Oh, or there could be rivets in the middle, which there are. So there is the button board which has a switch on it. That's interesting. Um, but Snap, crackle, pop. If this thing had RPN, I'd probably keep it to use, but um, I just, ugh, if I don't have an RPN calculator, I just, ugh, don't even want to go there. So there is some horrifying foam that's probably full of God knows whose finger grime. So the interesting thing is there's this little slide switch that, um, so the board was installed and then the switch was soldered in with wires and it, um, 
Yeah, I kind of broke it. <laughs> Oops. Well, it was either open or closed, so I think I don't really care. Oh, yeah. Of course, because they have to be obnoxious, it's got this insulated tape on it. So there you can see the button matrix, and that is a really exquisite, good old-fashioned tape board. So the way these boards were done is they have Basically, they took like an overhead transparency, like the ones they used back in high school, and um, they would just have this little narrow paper tape, and you just unreel the paper tape onto it. And this was done in um, a larger scale, two to one or four to one, and then they'd put it in a photographic reducer, and they'd you know reduce it by a fixed value, and then that was how you um, did the board. And actually, um, you can buy like special sticker sets that would have like the pins for a dip. Like you'd have, it would have like the 16 little rings, you know, eight on each side, and they'd all, you'd kind of smush it on there and rub the back and then peel the paper off and then you'd get your dip layout and all that other stuff. And that's how all of the old boards that are, you can, they're very recognizable because of the kind of the serpentine, fun, you know, entirely analog traces. You know, the software we have nowadays still hasn't even gotten to the point where it can replicate, you know, a trace layout of this size type. It's getting there. Some of the topological auto routers are getting close. But um, we still haven't really reclaimed the beauty they used to achieve. You know, I mean, you can see this is uh, much more mechanistically routed, though this is probably tape as well, because um, you can see these angles aren't all consistent. Um, one of the ways you can actually tell a lot of really early um, computer done boards is that they're all 90 degree angles, because a lot of the early CAD software couldn't do 45s. So you just have, you know, pure orthogonals, no, no angles of any sort. Um, this looks to have been somebody who did it with tape and was just kind of a little stiffy, stiffed. Who would have, if you have the flexibility of tape, why would you bother with such rigid orthogonality? And I mean, and you can tell, I mean, like, look at that little jag there. I mean, this was, this must have been a manually, a manual board just because, you know, that's not possible with, you know, CAD software of the era. As far as I know, unless there was... So here's the display board, and you can see how there's this little, this, this cute lens which basically kind of increases the seeming size of the displays, and you can also see how it was um, plastic well, plastic riveted in. But if you look here, you see these little rings. So what happens is that was just like a, that was just a cylinder, a straight up cylinder, and then they have like a hot press that just melts the plastic into a little dome. You know, these were much the same, though they're a little distorted now. I mean, you can kind of see the top came off a little bit. <laughs> That's one of the um, mechanisms people use for assembly uh, when they decide they hate their customers. Um, so it should be possible. But yeah, I need to go like this. Let's see, where is 333? So there are the displays in all of their wonders glory. Let me put a macro lens on just so you can get a better look at those. So here we are, here are the displays. You can actually see the little tiny traces in there. You can see each of the individual dies, each segment is four separate little dies and these were actually assembled by placing these little tiny chips and then wire bonding these little tiny chips in so they're you know this calculator was um, I looked it up this was released in 1972 or 73 and it was $129 in 1973 that's like a lot of money man um, it also appears I've been just kind of squeezing the board I've been hold I'm holding the board so it looks oh no of course that's, it's got power saving mode where it turns off all but one of the digits from the, the documentation I saw online. Let's see if I can't get the lens off these things. This is also, um, there we go. This is also plastic riveted in. Oh, there we go. So there's the raw displays. So I will probably actually save this board, display board because they're just so beautiful. But yeah. So let me push some buttons. 
kind of groping blindly on the keypad here. So, um... So you can see the little row of dies. Where's the focus? There it is. And you can actually see the wire bonds on top of them a little bit. It looks like these were, um, I wonder how they were molded. They certainly have a lot of, uh, you can kind of see the, um, oops, get out of there, clipping. The, uh, kind of the remnants of the mold. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of mold flash on the displays. So anyways, there's the interior of a, uh, a really rather beautiful internally um, anti-calculator. It's kind of interesting, you can see that there's solder mask on this board, but this board just has none. I wonder why. Also you can see the processor, it's a, it's a TMS 0602, and basically one of the first calculator on a chip devices. This is a... That's a ceramic IC too. Listen to that thing. You can actually see it looks like they probably bonded a whole bunch of them in series and then like used a a dice something to cut them apart. Because um it's got bare ceramic on the ends. Also, I mean listen to that, it's very rigid. These are all um this is like these aren't epoxy packages, I think these are all ceramic. So that should be, you know, indicative of the age. Now here's a seven SN274324, 27423, So these are presumably, I mean, just from the fact that look at all of the traces running out and they all go to the display board, I would bet these are display drivers. These are probably the main display drivers and these are peripherally involved. What I'm just really interested in is just this little very messily wound toroidal inductor. I mean, I don't think, I mean, were they generating a negative supply voltage in here, maybe? I don't see why. I and mean, it's held down with um, silicone. And you can see here's a whole bunch of really, of early diodes. You can actually see the junction. These are probably actually photosensitive because um, the junction is basically exposed. Um, lots of little transistors, a couple caps. Black box caps. That's interesting. There's a transistor with its um, rate, if its model. Most of these transistors have color coding for their um, part number on them. I wonder if TI applied that or if they came that way. And also, see, I think these are these look like carbon comp from the packages. It's a nice TR logo, SR11. There's another interesting on the bottom side. Where is it? Right here. I don't recognize this logo. Um, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be that way or soldered, but it's like a one and an oval and two. One, one, five F. I bet this display board is using a number of their products, which might be why it's nice. Whereas this is, you know, product specific. Anyways, there you go.